Good morning. Today is Sunday, September 20th, 2020. My name is Chris Rabelais. I am the political director of the Sports Vote and the co-founder of All Sports Market. And this is the weekly update for uh, the past seven days since last Sunday. I'm going to try to keep this under uh, 15 minutes. I've looked at the analytics. Uh, that seems to be 10 to 15 minutes about all everybody, anybody has time for. So I'm going to try to speed this up. Uh, what you're seeing here is the accumulation of everything that's happened in the previous week uh, from Sunday to Sunday. It's the accumulation of uh, work from the 10 people, including me, that make up the working group. So that's what you're looking at. So just to be clear as to what this is. Um, and it's generally just uh, for those of you that might not have seen it before. It's a general covering of the conditions that I think things that will affect our uh, march towards sports investing and stories and comments on those stories along with reports of what we're doing uh, internally, basically a weekly public report. That's what this is. So uh, with that, I just want to put that out because I never know when people start watching and I need to kind of make a uniform introduction uh, really from this point forward is just not assuming that anybody has seen anything else. So um, trying to try to keep it under 15 minutes. So that's about cutting it in half. So first thing, just uh, my, one of my experiences just, uh, you know, from being in business uh, about 30 years, well, 35 years since the first um, business that I owned when I was 15, uh, be open to being wrong about things that you think you've understood or you believe to be true over a long period of time. Um, this is a really hard thing to do. Uh, everybody doesn't like this. This is normal human behavior. I certainly didn't. I don't think I did a very good job of it before I got to about age 35, <laughs> maybe even 40. Um, but uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of very clever manipulation in the world in general. I'm not talking about anything in specific, specific, and especially these days. I would say the last 20 years. Well, really the last 10 years. There's been an, a hyperbolic acceleration of just misinformation on everything. So uh, be skeptical. Do research. Uh, I'm not giving you any direction of where to look. I'm just saying be skeptical of what you see. Uh, try to walk all the way around every issue. Um, you know, dig deep. Uh, take your time. Critical thinking is difficult. It's especially difficult these days. Um, some people will not believe this, but I can say this with a clear conscience. You know, I still look every day to be convinced that I'm not seeing what's happening, happening in the public domain and that my views on politics are wrong. I literally start the day every day with that in mind. And I look at the other side. As I mentioned before, I went to the Vegas thing last year, uh, the Freedom Fest, which is the libertarian, uh, which is as far right as you get on the spectrum until you get to the what I think are the crazies, crazies. Uh, I listened to days of speeches and, and I even bought uh, materials from these people and listened to it. So if you think that I'm just in love with my viewpoint, that's dead wrong. The only way to make good decisions is to make sure that you take in all the information. So this is just a life lesson that I've had to learn on my own. Uh, I'm not, it's not particular to an agenda and it's something that was really hard for me to do. So I imagine it's hard for most people to do. Um, but be be skeptical. Be very very skeptical, and always look for an agenda and try to dig it out. And uh, it's 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 exhausting, especially these days. Uh, but but it's necessary, or you're going to make very bad decisions. Uh, it may not be apparent to you immediately, but it it will make uh, bad decisions will be the result uh, over time, without a doubt. So okay, on to the other stuff. Uh, that's a philosophy thing. So uh, we're reaching almost 80% uh, open rate across. Uh, time on all of our lists to the ASM list, which is now um, almost 12,000, uh, or is it 13,000? Anyway, it's it's published on the stats page publicly, so you can see that there. Uh, I am going to produce a video about how we missed it 40 years ago, but it's uh, going to be a different format, and I want to really get to how this can be fixed. I do believe that uh, sports investing, social sports investing, is the solution for this. Uh, I have be believed that for a long time. That's why we're still here. Uh, that's why I drive it day after day after day. Uh, so I think I need to explain that a bit more. Um, okay, so if my thesis is that we missed it 40 years ago, how do we uh, cross over from here uh, to here, right? Okay, so um, investing will ultimately win because it's just a nonsensical proposition to say that you can build things by betting on them. How, how do you build something if you're not investing in it? I mean, if you're betting on it, you're 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 separated from it by nature. So, in order to build, you have to invest. How do you build when you? How do you build something by betting on something? Bet is you're not actually connected to it in any fashion. Okay, so 
that's uh, kind of the base premise. You know, uh, as I've said before, putting out very large ideas, you really have to make it super, super simple. And that is the super, super simple uh, foundational core of our proposition that I believe we uh, we'll win, we win with because it works across every other demographic, every other idea. Invest in real estate, invest in your small business, invest in your health, invest in education, invest in the country, invest in the environment. I mean, it's all that word is, is what people know to be the right thing to do if you can do it. The reason it hasn't happened is we, it hasn't been available. So I have to keep saying that because if I didn't believe that core premise was so strong and that we could stand on it through all kinds of attacks and difficulties, then I would let have let this go and I would have let it go a long time ago. Okay, so uh, Seeking Alpha did a big piece on DraftKings bubble. They say it's a bubble. There's going to be other in this others in this space that are also bubbles. Uh, Seeking Alpha is a pretty good source. I would say, you know, that just pay attention. Uh, I sounded the alarm on this before they sounded the alarm on this, but the fundamentals don't make any sense. The acceleration doesn't make any sense. Uh, the expenditures don't make any sense. Uh, it's so anyhow, uh, that doesn't mean the price won't go higher and it doesn't mean, you know, it can go like Tesla for a while or even some will say right now is is insanity. But you know, eventually these things break and they return uh, to Earth. So just realize, you know, you can play the bubble game, uh, but, it, it, you know, be fast <laughs> with the knife. Catching a falling knife is very difficult. Um, and you're going to see gambling scandals because they've rushed this thing out. They've rushed it out along with everything else that's being rushed in society. And you're going to see scandals because anytime you do shortcuts, there's always backfires. Um, so you have to win some battles to, uh, or have to lose some battles to win the wider war. Um, look, that's just, if you read books on, on historical battles of any sort, we are absolutely in that. I'm not, I'm not saying we've lost any battles. We have lost some battles. There's no question about that, but I'm just saying that you're not going to win every battle to win the, the broader war. And especially in a, uh, situation like this, where we're taking on a faction that's been drooling over uh, hundreds of billions of dollars a year for uh, for 20 years, basically. So uh, there will be points on each side, uh, but ultimately uh, we're going to win this because investing wins. Okay, investing wins, just like truth wins. Um, investing wins at the end of the day. Big ten, big ten reversal. I that's politically motivated. I just leave that there. The the results and the activities and the the difficulties and the infections and the shutdowns and the game delays and all the other stuff are going to play out like they always do. So just watch. Um, the proposition ahead of us, I believe, the sports vote, the idea behind the sports vote and tied closely to the election. I think these things are unbelievably closely aligned. Um, you know, do you want a sports betting past that is filled with 100 plus years of verified public corruption and stories all the time, all around the world uh, with tax evasion as part of the picture, because believe me, the uh, sports betting customers are still going to go where they can hide their transactions and get better prices. Both of those things exist, okay, right now, better prices and no taxes. Even if you don't get better prices, you instantly gain a benefit by no taxes. And that's always going to be a competition with, with the gambling folks because the offshore folks are established. They, I mean, how do we know this? Because Ace and I helped build that industry down there. Okay, so that is established. You're always going to be fighting against that established player and they're always going to pull the you don't have to pay taxes on it. Okay, that's the card they're going to pull. Even before you get to better lines and uh, better product offerings. So... Do you want that 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 constant battle between the offshore guys and then known history of, of 100 years of corruption, 100 years plus of corruption, almost exactly 100 years, which is we seem to be hitting 100 years on all kinds of levels here. Or that's the old sports economy. That's what it is. It's the old sports economy. Or do you want the next 100 years to be with with sports social investing with integrity? OK, so past gambling, casinos. Sports betting, corruption, tax evasion, status quo is here. Or do you want the next hundred years to be social sports investing? Okay, social sports investing, the new sports economy with integrity for the next hundred plus years. That's the vote. 
Okay, so New York Giants, I'm not going to play like I didn't see that, unlike some people with the way they supposedly cover the news. Uh, yes, of course, I saw that. You can be sure this deal was in the pipeline years ago, okay, before they got to this stage. They're going to roll it out, uh, everything like this that they possibly can, and there may be more, and they may get more stock pops out of it. This is the game you play. Um, I just don't think I really, other than stock increases in price, which which may or may not hold up, I really don't see the, I don't think it's going to attract gamblers. Uh, I New ones, okay, this, this is a known, this is like trying to sell cigarettes. This is like trying to run cigarette advertising in the year 2020. Do you really believe that people do not know what sports gambling, <laughs> first of all, the daily fantasy stuff from, from the DFS period five years ago, five years ago, seems like a lot longer, all the advertising saturation, all that stuff is happening again, and you're getting, and I'm seeing it because I'm doing a lot of research, is a lot of backlash about people turning off the radio, don't try to listen to your favorite teams on the radio because you're bombarded with endless sports gambling ads. The backlash is already starting. This happened five years ago under much different circumstances. I'm telling you that the public, aside from not being able to do this, they're going to start to resent the fact, because here's what it feels like. They see this, the stands are half full or empty, actually not, not half full, they're only 25% or less, okay, in only a handful of places. And then you have cardboard cutouts, you have some people trying out an anim animation. Some was just like, looks like the janitors wandering around in the stands while the games are being played. All of this stuff is all uh, going to be long-term damage, okay? This is all uh, shortcuts and, and impatience. And if I didn't know any better, it's being driven by the gambling faction and all these deals to try to get people. So you're trying to get people hooked on gambling in the middle of a, a severe economic downturn, including a 100-year plague. Uh, you may get a few people, okay? Uh, you may get a few people out of just give me something to do. They're going to hit the limit pretty fast because they're going to run out of money. They probably already have run out of credit, so there's no more of that. And then you're done. That's it. Uh, and you you have no more, there's no more customer there. So you eat your customers up. Um, and if that doesn't happen, okay, that's going to happen to some of them. On the other hand, you're going to have a, a, a lot of, um, you're going to have competition. So you have the sports books fighting over customers. So they're advertising, driving everybody crazy with the advertising. And then the fans go and they look at the games and they see these terrible, sh uh, the, the production value is miserable. <laughs> they, what it looks like to the fans is all you care about is stealing money out of my pocket. and You're not even giving me a good product. Okay. Remember, at the end of the day, that's all that matters to the customer. So it's all about trying to take more money out of my pocket while delivering me a lame product. That is a way to lose your customers. And in this day and age where eyeballs is all there is, if you lose them and somebody else grabs them, if Hollywood grabs them or a movie biz or a video game grabs them, you, you're done. They're gone. OK, they're going to forget about you. So uh, long term, short term views. It's is playing out in a in an incredible way right right now right in front of everybody. Um, okay, so Adelson, this is like this is Vegas. So so let's just give them a symbol. Adelson equals Las Vegas gambling and DraftKings equals online gambling. That's your two factions. Okay, that's your two factions. Something is happening in Singapore. Do your own research with Adelson. There's a billion dollars scandal of some sort with a casino in, in Singapore. Pay attention to that. There is something very dirty underneath this. Okay, USPS uh, court said, yep, that was a politically motivated uh, slowdown job on the Postal Service. So just mark that in your, mark that in your head. Uh, don't let that go before election day. Uh, the market is our markets. Uh, the both sides, the learning side, the pilot side, I'm watching it very closely. They're performing extremely well, very stable right now. It's not, it's not going crazy any direction. It's actually very stable, which is, is what it should be. I don't want to see wild gyrations in volume or wild gyrations in the prices. And it's, uh, the gaps are closing in the prices and the market is stabilizing. So this is, this is good. Um, yeah, why such a hurry for sports game, um, restarts? Uh, I think I, ju I just mentioned that it's. I think it's all driven by these gambling deals that they had in in the tank for a long time. So they're they're trying to recover that money, but they're going to end up losing their fans. 
Um, okay, so please pay careful attention to this this offer because it's a standing offer until unless and until I ever say otherwise. Okay, so from right now, from September twentieth, twenty twenty forward, unless I ever make another statement, you can ask me for any information, any information about ASM's history and my personal history, financial stuff. Anything that you think is relevant to ASM's development, including things that cross over into my personal life, if you ask for those things uh, via email, just send an email to support at allsportsmarket.com and you identify yourself and you sign a very simple non-disclosure form, I will turn over whatever you ask for, okay? I will turn over whatever. And that information, I swear to you on all things sacred, unless I don't have it, okay, and I haven't destroyed anything, okay? I... I have no no documents have been destroyed by me. Okay, I have everything in my possession that we've had. There was a drive crash a long, long time ago that had some Costa Rican Spanish translation audits of the SGO company, which is the operating company for ASM. But I even have, I'm pretty sure I have scans of that stuff. So that goes all the way back to 2004, I'm pretty sure. All right, so I have nothing to hide on any of that stuff. I will supply it to you, and you can turn right around and ask me questions about anything you see in those documents. I've made this offer once before about a year ago when all the hell broke loose with Jason and the, and the SEC case being filed, of which I had no advanced knowledge, no advanced knowledge of it at all. Okay, I was giving, I was just told about it after it took place. I made that offer. I got one uh, ask that was retracted and one ask that was completed out of uh, more than 10,000 people knew that I made that that offer. OK, so so it's out again. Um, OK, the sports folio points, which is from trading activity, which I mentioned before about the blockchain system that we're going to attach to the whole system rewards and the trading and all from last year, the the sports folio, just so you know, the sports folio points does still accrue when you trade. So you are accruing uh, trading points just from activity that we're going to use later for the rewards points, which will also be on the blockchain. Okay, so none of that is forgotten about. It's all, I just want to remind everybody that you are still benefiting from just activity uh, in building the model for us and you're getting rewarded for it in the process. Um, Ace and I helped build the sports book industry 20 years ago. Uh, that's a fact. That's when it started, 1999. That's what drew us down there. Um, and we know how to take it down. We are the cure because we help build the disease. That's just the truth of it. Um, USA was the first country in history to be built from a blueprint. You know, I really didn't understand just how far this went until I dug deeper and deeper, but really understand this is the uni uniqueness of this country. It is the first country in the history of the world, at least by any documentation, that was a plan. It was a blueprint. Uh, it was not a hereditary monarchy. It was not a family-owned thing. It was none of that. It was literally a plan. We're going to design and go over here and draw it on the ground and do it, okay? That has not happened and, and still hasn't happened. I, well, I can't say that. There's been models of, of our model afterward, but prior to that, not, not the case. So um, that's the power of an idea. So sometimes I hear people say things like, well, ASM is just an idea. It's not a thing. That's actually, that's bullshit. Okay. <laughs> ASM is a, is a market platform running on the Azure cloud. It owns a piece of property uh, in, New in New Mexico. It has patents uh, granted and pending and trademarks uh, granted all over the world. It, it, that's not true. Okay. But at the core, what we have to do is, is sell the idea of sports investing by demonstrating the first example of a live raise on on the third instance of the engine like i've said before to to spring everything open and and make it all pay off but ideas are powerful i mean america was an idea so to say i, I mean it's just an idea okay well america was just an idea so i don't know what that buys you um okay so i want to make a couple comments on the election right now because some, this uh, ginsburg um passing away is very very significant okay so so i believe this is the race maker for the election and this is what i believe is going to happen so i'm only telling you this because uh strategy is is it's smart to be thinking about strategy when you can read the the direction of things early so here's what i believe will happen i believe that the supreme court pick will be uh be pushed through before the election it's going to be used as a 
Um, it's going to be used as a reason to vote for Trump. That's exactly what he's, he's doing it right this second. It's what I would do if I were him. Uh, he's going to try to push that through to push the court further to the right uh, before the election and say this is the reason. Uh, he's going to get a lot of pushback on that. It's already happening even from his own party because, because they know the other part of it, which is what it's going to do to the politics. It's already happening. The, the, the left is going to rise up like you've never seen before because they see the social, they see their main agendas being threatened uh, by one more right-wing uh, Supreme Court justice. Uh, so they're going to marshal forces like you have never seen, especially this late in an election. And uh, they're going to spend money like crazy. They're going to put all their surrogates out and push like crazy to try to not have this pick uh, done by uh, and confirmed by the election date. But that probably is going to happen. I, I would be surprised. If, and so here's the rub. OK, if they do that, uh, the backlash from the Democrats is is going to be because of the uh, increase in the vote. OK, there are many. Look, do your own homework. Don't be a partisan on this. Be a partisan. That's your right. I'm just saying, if you look at the numbers, there's a lot more registered Democrats than registered Republicans. So this is, and I said it's a turnout election. It is a turnout election. This is going to drastically increase the Democratic turnout, and the Republicans know that. So what I believe will happen, I'm not going to call the, uh, you know, I am going to call the election. Here's what you're going to get based on the current trajectory. You're going to get the Supreme Court judge uh, pushed through. OK, because that's the rallying cry for the right. Uh, and then you're going to see a huge voter turnout effort uh, underway to get to activate the Democratic base to show up at the polls. OK, or in the mail or whatever. So if those two things play that way, based on, uh, you know, I mean, I've done a lot of I won't burden you with that. But a a Biden win is a likely outcome, whether you like that or not. The way that Biden actually loses, to be fair, I'm going to flip the script, okay? To be fair, the way that Trump wins is he actually needs to back off of this Supreme Court pick uh, because it's going to alienate so many people. But he won't, okay? He won't. I, I, don't, I don't think so. So what ends up happening, what does this mean for us, right? So, so, so that's the... Um, Oh, and actually, Biden will probably flip the Senate as well. If Biden wins, he's taking the Senate with him. So that's going to push. Uh, that's going to push all three branches of the government. So if the Supreme Court pick goes towards, if, if Trump is successful in installing that pick, it's going to be a huge turnout on the left, which is probably going to cost you the presidency and the Senate, which means you can have three branches of the government with the Democrats. Okay. The only way that stops is if you don't. I just don't. I really, really, really don't. See, and I look at both. I listen to both political strategists on both sides. The people running both campaigns. Okay. Don't don't think that I'm not in a filter bubble. I can't live in a filter bubble. I can't do it for all sports market. If I live in a filter bubble for all sports market, we'll fail. Okay. Please hear that. And I'm trying to say this is smart for everybody, not just for me. If I only listen to my views, if I only listen to my positions, then all sports market will fail. OK, in fact, you already would have. So and this is not this is everything, not just politics. This is every issue. I have to walk all the way around it. So I'm just doing that in this case. So what do I think that means for for ASM? OK, <clears throat> a right leaning Supreme Court is uh, as an anti-regulation uh, Supreme Court. It's a low regulation uh, uh, legal jurisprudence, which is more favorable for us, okay? It's more favorable for us achieving a uh, permit to operate. So we want a right court. ASM wants a right-leaning court. So for ASM, it is actually good that, a that, uh, that um, Trump would push through a Supreme Court justice. Okay, <laughs> hear that. Okay, please hear that. I'm being very serious. That's a positive for us. So do that. Okay. On the other side, and I, I don't want. I don't know whether uh, Trump presidency is good or bad in terms of uh, um, the, him, his presidency. Whether it's, I don't know that it matters to ASM one way or the other. But the court does. Okay. A right court, again, I just to be so clear about this, a right wing court benefits ASM. OK, so 
every time they move it further to the right, they're removing restrictions from us to get a permit to operate. Okay, that's the truth. Now, on the social, on the political side, if Biden wins, the left side is more permissive for things, right? Uh, uh, for gambling, for marijuana, for all of that stuff. So a right-leaning court and a left-leaning uh, um, administration is more pro-gambling even, okay? Hear this too, more pro-gambling, all right? And uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't have the full scorecard on that, but usually is the case, more liberal towards those things, okay, on gambling. And um, so, so actually a right, right-leaning right court and a left-leaning um, a presidency you know what? To be fair, I'm not. I, let me put that back on the table. I'm not. I have to look that up. I am not sure whether uh, a Biden or a Trump presidency is a net plus or a minus. I don't. I actually don't really think it matters that much in terms of what, because the courts are what are controlling uh, our outcomes. Okay. I mean, it's, seriously, it's it's not executive branch level. It's coming from the, it's coming from the courts. It's coming from there. We need to get some footing in the law through a decision, through uh, something in order to move ASM. So it's not an executive level action, it's a court level action. So we want the court to go right. Let me just, let me, let me leave it there. I don't know whether a Biden presidency or Trump presidency would make any difference from what I know and what I can see from here. Okay, I probably said the same thing six. These, these points, Please don't skim over this, okay? Because it, our, our ability to run our first live test is all a legal question, and legal questions are questions of the courts. So any loosening of the rules about being, you know, like it's almost like an FDA special use case, right? Everybody hears that now in, in the coronavirus era. That's kind of what we're looking for if you want to make a, an equivalent uh, comparison is we want a legal position, a safe legal position where we can get a use case, a emergency use authorization for one uh, case of administering ASM. <laughs> that's really all we need. Okay. And when you say that's SEC, yes, but no. Okay. Look at what happened. The SEC is only, the SEC looks to the courts. Okay. So their decision making is based, again, we go back to the courts. So anything that lo loosens the rules of the courts as directed towards us, which is regulation, anti-regulation. Remember the, when Trump did the, the show, and it was a show, there was nothing in those papers, big pile of papers, and like this is all the rules. We want that, okay? We want that. That's good for us, okay? So I don't know, summary, I don't know which presidency is better for ASM. It may make no difference, but I know that courts to the right Courts to the right are good for us. And I just, that's an honest, I swear to you on my life and all things sake, that's my honest, intellectually honest assessment of the politics of where we are and what it means for, for us. Now, because uh, I don't believe in hiding things, um, I want to lay my politics out clearly. I grew up in Louisiana as a very, very conservative Republican. I moved to Arizona. Uh, I voted as a. Uh, I voted for Ross Perot as an independent. I was a Republican before that. Uh, my policy, my views on politics, because I am an activist CEO, just like the Patagonia CEO is, and that's we have those now. So I'm going to say what that means. So on the social issues, I am socially conservative. Okay, so you're going to know what that means if you if you know politics. And I am fiscally liberal. Okay, that's everything is not one color or the other. It's not a Democrat. It, all Democrats love abortion and gay rights, and and no, they they've done that to confuse the issues and make a false choice. That's not how everything lines out. Okay, if you want to know, my positions line up clearly with a Christian social uh, Democrat. Okay. That's, that's going to be my affiliation, a Christian social Democrat. We really don't have those anymore. We used to. That's what I am. Okay. And then finally, in the video uh, description below, I'm going to keep uh, from now on, starting with this video, every um, 
link every every website that we control or have any influence over if it's ours or if we control it, it's going to be listed in the description if it's not in that description it is not something that we have anything to do with okay so you're on your own if the you know i mean i'm not saying they're not saying the truth or whatever's going on out there but i can't track all that stuff anymore so what we have is going to be in the link description and and that's it if it's not in there if anytime you want to look and see who what sites we have that's where you want to look okay so thank you very much for your time i don't think i made it the 15 minutes thing but i'm going to try really hard in the future uh to to do that now i'm at 30 minutes so have a nice enjoy your sunday football and i'll update you again um, next weekend. Bye now.